I am now sponsored by SeatGeek and FanDuel. Make sure to use code BENGAL. That's code BENGAL for $20 off your first purchase on SeatGeek and $20 free to play when you sign up for FanDuel. Also, check out my Twitch for live streams, a second channel for other games. Both links are in the description. What is going on, guys? Bengal again here coming back at you with another video today doing a, another mock draft. Of course, you guys have loved these so much on the channel in the past. Of course, I had to come back with another one. This is the post combine version if you guys are new here and are looking forward to more player evaluations nfl talk in general and of course mock drafts it is hashtag mock draft season so i'm sure you guys are very interested in that make sure to hit that subscribe button it would mean a great deal to me and without further ado i would like to say one more thing which is of course a lot of this is speculation based on team needs and personal uh, evaluations of the players themselves plus the hype that they're getting so of course it's just team plus positional need plus player value at that spot that makes a mock draft let's go ahead and get into the number one overall pick and that is going to the arizona cardinals we're going kyler murray a lot of hype around this following the combine decided to follow the hype my next mock draft probably will not include kyler murray to the arizona cardinals he did very very poorly in his interviews Obviously, if you guys watched much of the combine, you know that he didn't do anything. He was just on the field at certain times. So he didn't throw. He didn't run. He didn't do any of the drills. But apparently, the Cardinals really liked him. I don't really take a ton of stock in Cliff Kingsbury saying he would take him number one overall back in November before, you know, the Arizona Cardinals job was even available. So I don't really care so much about that. But if the Arizona Cardinals apparently falling in love with him he interviewed great with the cardinals via reports i could see the arizona cardinals taking kyler murray now would this be the right move for their franchise i think absolutely not josh rosen was my number two qb in the draft last year of course followed up by number one baker mayfield uh or following up baker was on another level but josh rosen was a really really talented player and when you're dealing with the arizona cardinals and you have one of the worst offensive lines in football absolutely void of any offensive weapons whatsoever and you can say larry fitzgerald he's in his mid to late 30s now his production has not been there uh he's still a, a decent player but that can't really be your number one target at this point and there was nobody else dealt with some injuries um and christian kirk was one of those that got injured i think what it comes down to and david johnson's a good player who's misutilized it was just the offense was just so bad around rosen once you get some protection and some playmakers, I think he's going to have a much better season. So probably don't jump the gun and trade him. But if they were to, Kyler Murray on the board at number one, as every player is, I guess I could see it happening. As the 49ers rush to the podium to make their pick, it's Nick Bosa out of Ohio State, an edge rusher. They need edge help very, very badly. I think the bottom line here is outside of that, this is the best player in the draft. And if... The best player available, the best player in the draft, is at a position of need. How can you not go Nick Bosa here if you're the San Francisco 49ers, who just don't have any presence on the edge at all? Solomon Thomas is a better inside player. DeForest Buckner, obviously an inside player. Eric Armstead does his best work on the inside. And then what do you have, Ronald Blair? You need to come in and bring in a talented edge rusher. I think Nick Bosa fits the bill. If Nick Bosa goes number one overall, obviously so much of this changes. And I think this 49ers pick um, might not even be Josh Allen. It might be, might be somebody else. Could even be uh, a cornerback or a linebacker if they reach that far down. But I kind of doubt it. I think edge is probably the pick here or trade down number three we got the jets going josh allen an edge rusher out of kentucky really really solid athlete and i think he'd be a versatile player the jets are moving to a 4-3 he could play as a 4-3 defensive end i think also drop off the ball to be a coverage linebacker in certain sub packages probably wouldn't want him doing that on a consistent basis you want to mold him into a more dominant pass rusher He's not complete right now. He's more athlete than technical skill, but he is a very solid player, and I think worth the pick here for the Jets at number three. The Raiders have a ton of talent on the interior of the defensive line. A bunch of really solid players. P.J. Hall, Maurice Hurst in particular, Josh, uh, me, Jonathan Hankins is a free agent, but Quinnen Williams is the best player on the board. He's the number two player in the draft for me. I could easily see him going at number three to the Jets, but Quinnen Williams is a stud absolute stud and when you're dealing with the Raiders 
one of the least talented teams in football. I think best player available is a good way to go as the Bucks at number five go Jawan Taylor, arguably the best offensive lineman in this entire draft. They renewed, or they picked up the option, I should say, on DeMar Dotson. So he has one more year left. He's like 34, 33, 34. So I still think they could go offensive tackle. DeMar Dotson on the right side. Juwan Taylor, a right tackle. They just re-signed Donovan Smith to a three-year extension. I could easily see them going with a right tackle here. And if Juwan Taylor's the best offensive lineman in the class, easily see the Bucks pulling the trigger at five. As the Giants go Dwayne Haskins, quarterback out of Ohio State, it's pretty much a foregone conclusion to me at this point that the Giants will go quarterback. I think not re-signing Landon Collins has a lot to do with that. Uh, and I think that Dave Gettleman basically saying how well the Patrick Mahomes situation worked out where they drafted a quarterback while already having a quarterback in Alex Smith and they moved him later on. And Patrick Mahomes obviously had an incredible uh, first season starting. I think it could be the exact same thing. Giants go Haskins at six. And then uh, maybe takes over halfway through the season or at the end of the season uh, for Eli Manning, depending on how the season's going. Probably not very well because I am a Giants fan. Uh, the Giants are completely devoid of talent outside of Odell Beckham Jr. and Saquon Barkley. That's a little bit of hyperbole. Like, they have some good players. Evan Ingram's okay. Dalvin Tomlinson's really solid on the defensive line. B.J. Hill played pretty well. Like, they're decent players, but they're a pretty talentless roster. So I think they're going to reset and go with a uh, quarterback here at number six as DK Metcalf goes to the Jags at number seven, rising up boards tremendously after an unbelievable combine. Great size for receiver, almost 6'4", 230 pounds with blazing speed at 4'3", incredible vert. His agilities were not great. Three cone, not great. I get that. He slipped when he was doing the three cone like twice. I don't really care about that. It's more of a technique thing than anything. Uh, when you look to the tape, DK Metcalf gets in and out of breaks a lot quicker than what his three cone would say. So he is the uh, the most, well, I should say the highest upside receiver in the draft. And for the Jaguars, who really haven't had the same offense since Allen Robinson left, would probably look to go with a talented receiver a lot of upside here big deep threat out of Ole Miss as the Lions go Rashawn Gary defensive lineman out of Michigan he's another guy that tested unbelievably well uh 458 40 at 277 pounds good vertical for him as well as like 36 and a half inches good uh, bench press explosive player you just I don't really find him to be a dominant edge rusher and I think he could do well with moving to the inside but if the Lions view him as an edge rusher, which is what he was at the University of Michigan, you keep a Michigan player in Michigan with the Detroit Lions. And uh, Rashawn Gary is a really, really talented player. Another athlete versus technique player at the moment. Really strong, really powerful, really explosive and fast. Definitely a high upside player. And for the Detroit Lions, they could use help on that edge spot. Someone that can rotate all around the defensive line. I think Rashawn Gary has a lot of upside and a lot of value here at number eight. Now from 9 to 16, we're going to start out with Jonah Williams out of the University of Alabama. Has played right tackle at Alabama. Has started at left tackle now uh, for, I think, a season and a half or two seasons. He's played a lot of offensive line, a lot of tackle, and he wants to be a tackle at the next level. However, he could do his best work by moving inside the guard. Daniel Jeremiah has been saying it. A lot of these analysts have been saying it. And not only that, but he has the frame for it. He has the build. He's got those, uh, he's got not tremendously short arms, but they're shorter. Uh, you generally want longer arms to play tackle, uh, but he's explosive, man. He's a really quick player, showcases he can pull at a high level um, based on some of these combine agility drills. And for the Buffalo Bills that need to make an emphasis, a point of emphasis on protecting their franchise quarterback and Josh Allen, you need to bring in an offensive lineman and a versatile one that can play left tackle, right tackle, left guard, right guard. I think you have a lot of value here with Jonah Williams as the Broncos go with another Williams, Greedy Williams, cornerback out of LSU. He had a weird combine. He had a weird combine, ran really fast, 4-3-8, first attempt. And then he only did two of the on-field cornerback drills and didn't really look good at all, especially in pedal and react. He was all over the place. He really did not look solid at all. And then apparently got injured, stopped doing the drills. I feel like some of those combine drills really could have hurt his stock, but if the Broncos view him as the best cornerback in the class, 
they might take a cornerback here with Bradley Roby being a free agent with not having much else at cornerback outside of Chris Harris. Greedy Williams could make a ton of sense for them. Get a flyer and a really, really quick or fast player, I should say, to bring back the no-fly zone in Denver as the Bengals go with another LSU player. That's Devin White. Broncos also could take a quarterback. I know Flacco, whatever. Uh, this could be a quarterback. Could be Drew Lock very easily. But the Bengals go Devin White, linebacker out of LSU. They need linebacker really, really badly. I'm not sure how much longer Vontez Perfect is going to last in Cincinnati. I wouldn't think it'd be much longer. Preston Brown is a free agent. The Bengals only signed him to a one-year deal last year. Devin White is an explosive, explosive athlete. Sideline to sideline guy. That's just raw right now. And I think with the coaching in Cincinnati, could be a big problem. I'm not even sure they have a linebacker uh, coach signed, let alone a defensive coordinator that could really, really help mold Devin White into a talented player. He's a fantastic athlete. Nobody's questioning that. But his tackling is so inconsistent. His angles of pursuit are so inconsistent. I did a breakdown of him on my channel uh, maybe a month or so ago. And for the people that just check out the box score and say, he's a great tackler, look at all these tackles, you got to watch him play because he doesn't do it on a down-to-down, consistent basis. He goes way too high. He slips out of tackles all the time. He has to get that level of consistency. Only been playing linebacker a short time. Was recruited to LSU as a running back. So I think the sky is the limit for him. Just he's got a low floor because if he can't work out some of these kinks, He's not going to last in the NFL a very long time as, you know, anything other than a special teamer, which I know that's that's absolute worst case scenario. Great athlete. He just needs to get coached up as the Packers go Brian Burns, an edge out of Florida State. And wow, this is a guy that I think was super, super talented at Florida State with a number of question marks. And he came into the combine and he answered those questions in a hurry. Came in, weight was a big concern. He was only about 230 pounds at Florida State. Well, guess what? He came into the combine, 249 pounds, almost 250 pounds. But can he keep that level of explosion, that speed that made him such a good player at Florida State? And the answer is yeah. He ran really, really fast, 4.53 or so. 10-yard split was a 1.61 or so. He was a really, really fast player. Explosion was there tested really well and then in the on-field drills that was the biggest point of emphasis for me I wanted to see how well he's going to perform those on-field drills and he was absolutely incredible especially in the off the ball drills this was a defensive lineman that was moving better than any linebacker you saw at the combine better than most of the defensive backs showcased the best ball skills there which sounds unbelievable but he looked incredible I think his value is sky high he's a top five player in the draft for me and for the Packers who need edge really, really badly with Nick Perry being terrible, Clay Matthews being a free agent, Brian Burns fits the bill. This is a stud for the Packers at number 12. And the Dolphins get themselves a stud as well. Last time they picked at number 13, they get Lormy Tunsil. Fell way far down to number 13. He was a top five player for sure. And he's been great with the Dolphins. And guess what? They get another faller here. It's Ed Oliver. Absolute monster out of Houston. Great, great run defender. And, uh, showcased himself being a more consistent pass rusher as well as his final season at Houston uh, despite some uh, injury concerns with him there at Houston just kind of sitting out but this is a stud player and the Dolphins who need help on the interior of the defensive line get themselves an absolute stud in Ed Oliver defensive tackle out of Houston as Montez Sweat goes to the Falcons another unreal combine just crazy a six foot six 260 pound defensive lineman that came out and ran four four one I've, I've never seen anything like it i can i can confidently tell you that is the most impressive 40 time i've ever seen and does he play that fast i don't think so i don't think he really showcases top tier explosion showcases great pursuit and movement in space is pretty solid but he's if he can work and bring that 44140 explosion to his game at the next level. He's going to be a stud player. And for the Falcons that could use help on the edge, Montez Sweat fits the bill. Redskins go Drew Locke, quarterback out of Mizzou. He falls down the board a little bit. I'm not saying uh, he won't get drafted before this or a team might not or might look to trade up. No trades in this one for the sake of continuity. But Drew Locke, he's a decent player, man. And uh, he looked fantastic at the combine, looked great in the drills. 
tested fairly well, interviewed fairly well. He's a good player. He is. Uh, might be QB2 for me now. I think the combine really did answer a lot of questions. We had a lot, a lot uh, about a lot of these guys. And it was really, for quarterbacks, what it comes down to a lot is, are those reports you hear of them testing well on the whiteboard? You know, how well do they understand plays? How well do they understand defenses? Drew Locke, I think, passed the test and looked great in the on-field drills as well. So in a quarterback class where it's tough to really see who two, three, four might be, five even, I think Dwayne Haskins is number one. I think Drew Locke uh, makes a good case for number two. He would definitely have to be QB2 for me now. Uh, he had a great combine. Cleveland Furl, one of my favorite players in the draft, just falls down the board a little bit because uh, he didn't test particularly well in the combine. Interviewed fantastically, as far as I've heard. Um, but he chose to do the agility drills and then didn't look all that great in them. Didn't choose to run the 40. I don't think he really boosted his stock in terms of on-field uh, production for the combine in those in those drills. But I, I think interviewing well is a big bonus. And I think the tape don't lie. <laughs> in a lot of instances, it doesn't. Cleveland Furl was super productive at Clemson. Great first step. I think it's elite. I think it's uh, the best first step of anybody in this draft class. He's an incredibly explosive player. I really like what I see. He's a top five player in the class for me as well. So Cleveland Furl, great value. Clemson now staying in the Carolina area with the Panthers at number 16. They get themselves a great edge rusher. Julius Peppers retires. Maybe this is your next Julius Peppers. And I mean that as the utmost highest praise of Cleveland Furl because Julius Peppers is a first ballot Hall of Famer and an absolute monster. And I'm sure a player that Cleveland Furl looked up to. 17 to 24, we're going to start out with the Cleveland Browns. They go Christian Wilkins, another Clemson defensive line beast. This guy moved all over the defensive line at Clemson. And for the Browns, they're pretty much in a best player available sort of situation. Christian Wilkins is a top 10 player on the board for me. And, um, or I should say in the draft overall on the board right now, he would be probably the best player available. He is a really, really solid player. He's an absolute monster a force to be reckoned with on the defensive line, whether it's stuffing the run, he excels at that. He's also an elite interior pass rusher. Really solid player to add next to the beast out of Charlotte that is Larry Ogunjobi as the Minnesota Vikings go Cody Ford. Originally had this penciled in as Garrett Bradbury. I think they could use some interior offensive line help, but if they like Pat Elfline a lot at center, they probably wouldn't look to take a center. They might take a versatile offensive lineman like Cody Ford or uh, Dalton Reisner that I've had penciled in there on the last couple of mock drafts even. Cody Ford falls to 18. Really talented player. I like him a lot. Uh, probably moves inside to guard. He's 330 pounds or so. Uh, moves fairly well. He has good functional strength. And he played right tackle at Oklahoma. I think he's another guy that could move inside and be a really, really solid player. And for the Vikings that have holes all over that offensive line, he offers versatility and talent, which is what you're looking for uh, if you're the Vikings picking here. Hopefully they don't take a big cornerback. There are a number of ones they could fall in love with in this class. As the Titans go, Debo Samuel, receiver out of South Carolina. Great senior bowl for him. Great year. Uh, great combine. He cemented his stock as a first-round player. Will he go in the first round? Remains to be seen, obviously. Uh, there are a lot of really talented receivers in this class. It's not top-heavy, but there's a ton of depth. So, Debo Samuel, I think, fits the bill here for the Titans. They get a really crafty receiver, runs good routes, has good hands. I mean, what more do you want here at number 19? Number 20. The Steelers get Ryan Shazier V2 in Devin Bush. Another Big Ten linebacker out of Michigan. Ryan Shazier, of course, was Ohio State. Both incredible speed. Devin Bush came out and ran like 4-4-3 at the Combine. Really, really good time for him. Looked good in the on-field drills as well. Uh, came in heavy as well. 234 pounds. So I say heavy not in a bad way. That's a good weight for him. He's only 5'11". Really, really athletic player. Good tape at Michigan as well. Uh, I think, again, Ryan Chase v 2 That's what the Steelers are looking for here. That's what they get at number 20 in Devin Bush. Number 21, Seahawks. Looking to recreate the Legion of Boom. They get Jonathan Abram, a versatile safety at Mississippi State. His best tape, he looks like the best safety in the class. And a really, really talented player. First round player for sure. His worst tape, uh, maybe third round. It's just consistency is a problem for him. I think you're going to find the player somewhere in the middle. 
be like, you know, late first round talent. I think that's where he falls in kind of here at number 21. And the Seahawks could use some safety help. They're losing Earl Thomas. There's no chance he rec- or comes back to uh, Seattle and resigns. And I think Bradley McDougal had a good year last year um, for the Seahawks. They can move him over to free safety. They can play Jonathan Abram at free safety instead of strong. They can move Jonathan Abram into that nickel cornerback role where he was so talented at Mississippi State. They could use him as a box linebacker the way they use Cam Chancellor because he has that experience at Mississippi State. And he's a st- really, really talented player. One of the very talented Mississippi State Bulldogs in this class. Jeffrey Simmons, Jonathan Abram, and Montez Sweat. Those are three that are just absolute monsters. It's crazy because uh, I feel like you think that out of Mississippi, it's Ole Miss that's the most dominant uh, talent-producing school there. But, I mean, the Mississippi State Bulldogs are well represented here uh, in this class. They got three first-round players, caliber-wise at least. Jeffrey Simmons, bad injury. Uh, it's going to hurt him a little bit as the Ravens go. Nikhil Harry out of Arizona State. I saw a list, dumb list in my opinion, that had Nikhil Harry as hurting his stock at the combine, but a lot of people thought he was going to run way slower, like 4-7. Explosiveness was a concern. You wonder just how explosive is this guy? Can he beat press? Can he run by cornerbacks? Because he doesn't really create that separation as much. He's got great hands, great jumping ability to go up there and get the ball at its peak. But explosion was a question. They came out, he ran like 4 5 3. And it was a fantastic time for him, and he boosted his stock quite a bit. This is a really, really talented player that has the physical traits to match now. We know that for a fact. And just a little bit of coaching. Got to become a little bit of a better route runner. He's so dangerous after he has the ball in his hands. So you're going to look to get him the ball short, but you can throw the ball further down the field. He's a fantastic jump ball receiver. This is a weapon. And for a Lamar Jackson, He needs weapons. You need to surround him with some talent if you want to get the most out of that offense. Nikhil Harry fits the bill. They need wide receiver badly. John Brown's a free agent. Michael Crabtree got cut. You can't have Willie Sneed as wide receiver one. Get Nikhil Harry. Number 23, the Texans go. Andre Dillard out of Washington State. And uh, Andre Dillard's a really talented player. One of the best offensive tackles in this class for a team that needs offensive line as badly as the Houston Texans do. Andre Dillard makes a ton of sense as the Raiders grab Josh Jacobs, the best running back in the class, at number 24. Surprised he's not getting more hype. I know he didn't start at Alabama. They really were a running back by committee sort of situation with with he and Damian Harris and and Najee Harris, who are not related. Uh, But Josh Jacobs, he's fresh. He's talented. He had 41% of his runs go for either a first down or a touchdown last season. Are you kidding me? Almost half his carries either moved the chains or ended a drive in a, in a touchdown. That's just absolutely crazy. Uh, Josh Jacobs, tremendously talented player. Could also see them adding another running back. I think when it comes down to Marshawn Lentz, a free agent, he could easily retire, especially coming off injury. Jalen Richard is a free agent. Running back is a position of need for the Raiders. They have money. They could choose to go after a Le'Veon Bell or a Mark Ingram. But Josh Jacobs at number 24, I think, would be pretty good value for their Oakland Raiders, who need everything. You're telling me John Gruden doesn't want an offensive weapon? I think I think he does. And the final stretch, 25-32. to 32. We're going to start off with the Eagles going Draymond Jones, a defensive tackle out of Ohio State. Really, really explosive player out of Ohio State on the interior of the defensive line. Didn't test all that well at the combine, um, but didn't test all that poorly. Just kind of... Uh, middle of the pack average and I do keep referencing the combine it did answer a lot of questions we'll talk about another player 27 that answered a lot of questions and uh it's not about the combine so much as that tells you everything you need to know because it doesn't tape is the most important thing but this is the post combine mock draft we're going to talk about the combine uh Draymond Jones bottom line even after an average combine in terms of athletic testing he's a really talented player another big 10 guy that's just an absolute stud and for the Eagles that just let go of Timmy Jernigan, they have a hole at defensive tackle. I think they're probably looking to draft one, and Draymond Jones would be excellent value here at number 25. A player that would probably go top 15 in any other class, but th- there's just so many unreal defensive tackles in this one. He suffers a little bit. As the Colts get Kelvin Harmon, he hurt his sock a lot at the combine, I'm not going to lie to you, but his tape's good. He's not a player that needs that athleticism so much because it's not the most important thing, as we see with some other receivers. He's a guy that's going to kill you with his route running and his ability to make contested grabs 
catching in traffic, holding on to the football. Those are some things that Kelvin Harmon does really, really well. He's an exceptional route runner, and I think he'd be an excellent addition to the Indianapolis Colts. A possession receiver for Andrew Luck reminds me kind of like a Drew Brees to Marquise Colston kind of situation. I mean, there are too many to count almost, but this is a really, really good player, and I think he would complement T.Y. Hilton exceptionally well. And Andrew Luck, Kelvin Harmon, T.Y. Hilton, Eric Ebron, Marlon Mack, not to mention their offensive line that's really come along nicely with the addition of Quentin Nelson. That's a really, really talented offense. They've got to look receiver at some point in this draft. Might not be number 26, as I have them going here uh, for here. They have to in the top two or three rounds, for sure. There's going to be good value there in the third round. Really, really depth, uh, depthy class. That's not a word, but we're going to go with it. Uh, really, really full class of wide receivers. They're going to be valuable uh, from rounds two, three, four, five. You're going to get some good value. So Kelvin Harmon, I, I do think he's worth the pick here at number 26, even if uh, some guys have kind of gotten a little bit cold on him after the combine. Speaking of someone who got red hot after the combine, Paris Campbell out of Ohio State. They tested so well. Ohio State, Penn State, Michigan, all these Big Ten schools came out uh, and they performed. They showed up at the combine. Paris Campbell, another example of that, ran 4-3-1. Everyone knew he was going to be fast. That wasn't a concern. I tweeted out, follow me on Twitter, by the way, twitter.com slash Designs. tweeted out like two months ago that I thought he was going to run fast. Four, I thought he was going to be one of the three fastest there. Um, so I had Paris Campbell, who was. Kendall Sheffield, who got injured. He tore, or like lightly tore his pec, or partially, while doing the bench press the night before, which sucked. So he didn't do anything. And then Marquise Brown thought he was going to run real fast. He got injured. He didn't even go. So kind of sucks. But Paris Campbell showed up and he answered questions big time. Not with the 40. Not with his athleticism. We knew he was going to have that. Incredible vertical. 40 and a half inches. But in the on-field drills, Paris Campbell looked so clean in and out of his breaks. Looked awesome at the top of the route. Getting in and out. So... He showcased a lot of routes that he wasn't running at Ohio State. This was, you know, uh, a dump it off to him, watch him go kind of player at Ohio State. That's how their offense ran. Paris Campbell showcased that he can run a number of different routes and do so at a very elite level. Very, very fast player, but also a very quick player. And that helps him a lot in running routes. He looked so, so good in the on-field workouts. I think that boosted him a lot. Wouldn't be shocked to see him sneak into the first round. I think it's pretty good value. Raiders get a burner and, uh, you know, rest in peace, Al Davis. But, I mean, this is an ideal Raiders pick, someone that can fly. Number 28, the Chargers go Dexter Lawrence out of Clemson. He had a pretty good combine before getting injured a little bit. I think he uh, pulled a quad or something along those lines. Nose tackle, great tape at Clemson. He benefit probably from playing along a, a bunch of studs in Cleveland Furl and Christian Wilkins. We'll give Austin Bryant a mention as well. But uh, Dexter Lawrence, really, really solid player. I think, what are the Chargers looking for more than anything? And that's an interior presence on the defensive line to complement their edge rushers. Dexter Lawrence is someone that can get in there and hold blocks and stuff the run. You're going to only create more opportunities for Joey Bosa and Melvin Ingram to really do their thing. And he opens up a lot of options for the Chargers defensively. Dexter Lawrence, really, really good player. As the Chiefs go Byron Murphy out of Washington. Probably my first cornerback. He might be CB1 for me. We have DeAndre Baker obviously falling out of the first round. Byron Murphy is a really, really talented player. Really instinctive. Excellent in zone coverage. Tested pretty well. 4-5-5 was, was good for him. I thought he'd be maybe 4-5-3 range, so he's a little bit slower. Not by much, uh, but looked awesome in the on-field drills. Got a lot heavier, so that probably hurt his 40 time a little bit. Don't really care about his 40 time. Um, wasn't too slow. Built up a lot of muscle. Added a lot of weight to be more physical. And he's a really, really instinctive zone cover corner. And I think he would fit in with the Chiefs really, really well. Add to uh, what they have going with Kendall Fuller. They need cornerback help badly. They need maybe a safety, need some linebackers. They need some edge help with Justin Houston maybe getting cut. And D Ford maybe being traded. But they get a stud here at number 29 in Byron Murphy, who I would not be shocked if he won a lot earlier. As the Packers, another player I wouldn't be shocked if he won a lot earlier. TJ Hawkinson, arguably the best tight end in the draft, available at number 30. Wouldn't be shocked if he went at number 11. I think I had him penciled in the Bengals last time around. He had a good combine as well. Looked really, really solid. The Packers 
haven't really gotten what they expected out of Jimmy Graham, and they need tight end help very, very badly. TJ Hawkinson is another really, really good player. Great run blocker, great receiver. He can kind of do it all. He's that do-it-all tight end, and I think a really, really good weapon for Aaron Rodgers to utilize uh, as he comes down the final stretch here with the Green Bay Packers. You know, you need to win now. If you Aaron Rodgers is a generational quarterback, right? You need to surround him with some talent. Get that man another Super Bowl. Number 31, another one of my favorite players in the draft, Nasir Adderley out of Delaware. It's an FCS school, but he's a beast. The first prospect breakdown of 2019 uh, on this channel was Nasir Adderley. And if you guys thought I loved him, loved him then, nothing has changed. He's still an absolute monster. Uh, high ankle sprain kept him out of the combine activities, but he is just a monster. Look great at the Senior Bowl as well. This is a player that I am so excited about. Can't wait to see what he does at the next level. And for the Rams, that have a free agent, free safety in LaMarcus Joyner. Need to address that position either in free agency or the draft. Nasir Adderley fits the bill. Excellent single high safety for the uh, LA Rams here in this scenario. As the Patriots finish things off, go Noah Fant. We got to know they love two tight end sets at this point. They love it more than anything. Gronk and Aaron Hernandez. Killer combo. Then you had Gronk and Martellus Bennett. Now you're going to have Noah Fant and Rob Gronkowski until he retires, which I think is probably not too far down the road. Noah Fant, really, really good player. Wouldn't be shocked to see him as the first tight end off the board in this scenario. He is not. He goes to number 32 to the New England Patriots. And that is going to wrap up this mock draft, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I know, of course, everybody hates it. Everybody disagrees. Um, you, you're allowed to. I don't care. So that is going to do it for me. Subscribe if you're new. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.